Juran ranks quite near Deming in the contributions he has made to the field of quality. <coughs> he is best known for the following contributions to the quality philosophy. Number one, Juran's three basic steps to progress. We will talk about them one by one. So, first is Juran's three basic steps to progress. Second is Juran's ten steps to quality improvement. Third is a very important principle which he has given that is the Pareto principle. And the fourth and the most important is Juran's strategy. Juran basically believes that management has to adopt a unified approach to quality. Quality according to him is defined as fitness for use. Here the focus of Juran's philosophy is on the needs of customer. He also believes that there is a point of diminishing returns that applies to quality and competitiveness. According to his philosophy, if an automobile manufacturer researches and his research reveals that buyers of his vehicles drive them uh, for an average of say uh, 100,000 kilometers before trading them in, the manufacturer should invest the resources necessary to make this line of cars run travel free for 110,000 only. According to him, resources devoted to improving quality beyond this point will run the cost up higher than the typical buyer is willing to pay. Juran proposes a universal way of thinking about quality which he calls the quality trilogy that comprises quality planning, quality control and quality improvement. This concept fits all functions and levels of management and product lines. Joran's three basic steps to progress are broad steps that according to him the companies must take if they are to achieve world class quality. They are achieve a structured improvement on a continual basis combined with dedication and sense of urgency. Number two, establish an extensive training program. Number three, establish commitment and leadership the part of higher management. Juran Tralji summarizes the three primary managerial functions which are quality planning, quality control and quality improvement. Quality Trilogy process starts with quality planning at various levels of the uh, organization, each of which has a distinct goal. At the upper management level, planning is termed as strategic quality management. Broad quality goals are established, a structured approach is selected in which management chooses a plan of action and allocates resources to achieve the goals. Planning at the middle management level is termed operational quality management. Here the departmental goals consistent with the strategic goals are established. At the workforce level, the planning involves a clear assignment to each worker. Each worker is made aware of how his or her individual goal contributes to the departmental goals. After the planning phase, quality control takes over. Here the goal is to run the process effectively such that the plans are enacted. If there are deficiencies in planning process, the process may operate at a high level of chronic waste. Quality control will try to prevent the waste from getting worse. If unusual symptoms are sporadically detected, quality control will attempt to identify the cause behind this abnormal variation. Upon and defining the cause, remedial action will be taken to bring the process back to control. In the slide shown here, we have Juran's quality trilogy. The three phases of planning, control and improvement and the cost trends associated with poor quality are shown in this diagram. The objective of the control phase are to eliminate the causes associated with the sporadic spikes and to bring the process output within the zone of quality control. 
The next phase of the trial G process is quality improvement which deals with the continuous improvement of the product and process. This phase is also called the quality breakthrough sequence. Such improvements usually require an action on the part of upper and middle management. They deal with actions such as creating a new design, changing methods or procedures of manufacturing and investing in new equipment. As can be seen in the quality trilogy diagram here, quality improvement will usually cause a reduction in the poor quality. The chronic waste drops down to a lower level due to quality improvement. Repeating the whole cycle lets the company strive for further improvements. Now we will talk about steps required for quality planning. The first step is identify the customer both external and internal. Juran stresses the importance of identifying the customer both external and internal. The customer is considered internal whenever the output flows from one department to another within the organization. The second stage of quality planning is determining customer needs. Long-term survival of the company is contingent upon meeting the needs of the customer. Conducting analysis and research, surveying clients or non-clients and studying customer needs are a few examples of activities in this category. The third step of quality planning stage is develop product features that respond to customer needs. With customer satisfaction as the utmost objective, the product or service should be designed to meet the customer requirement. As the customer needs change, the product should be redesigned to conform to those changes. The fourth step of this stage is Establish quality goals that meet the needs of customers and suppliers alike and do so at a minimum combined cost. This point embraces the concept of the extended process involving vendors and customers as well as the organization. Pursuit of individual or departmental goals should be avoided. The total cost from an organization point of view should be minimized and corresponding goals should be determined. Fifth step of this stage is develop a process that can produce the needed product features. A product is designed based on the knowledge of customer needs. This step deals with the manufacturing processes of that product. Methods must be developed and adequate equipment must be available to make the product match the design specification. The sixth step of planning stage is prove process capability. The task here is to establish whether the given process is adequate for making a product that will conform to design specification, which are based on customer needs. This task may require analyzing output from a stable process and determining its level of operation. If the operating level meets the desirable goals, the process is labeled as capital. Then comes the second stage that is of quality control. So, we will be talking about steps required for the quality control stage. The first point in that stage is choose control subjects. Product characteristics that are to be controlled in order to make the product conform to the design requirement should be chosen. For instance, a wheel's control characteristics may be the hub diameter and the outside diameter of the hub. Selection is done by prioritizing the important characteristic that influence the operation or appearance of the product and impact of the customer. Second point in control stage is choose units of measurements. Based on the quality characteristics that have been selected for control, appropriate units should be chosen. For example, if the hub diameter is being controlled, this unit of measurement might be millimeters. Third point in control stage is establish measurement. 
Procedures for taking measurement must be defined. These procedures should take into account the equipment to be used, the way in which it is to be used, who should take the measurement, how the measurement should be taken, and other related issues. Here care must be taken to ensure that persons taking measurements are adequately trained. Fourth point in control stages, establish standards of performance. These standards should be based on customer requirements. For instance, a standard of performance for the hub diameter could be, say, 20 plus minus 0.2 millimeter. A hub with a diameter in this range would be compatible with final assembly and would also contribute to making a product that will satisfy the customer. Fifth point in the quality control stages, measure actual performance. This phase of quality control is concerned with the measurement of actual process output. Measurements are taken on previously selected control subjects. Such measurements will provide information on the operational level of the process. The sixth point in this stage is interpret the difference. This involves comparing the performance of the process with the established standard. If the process is stable and capable, then any difference between actual and standard may not be significant. The seventh point here is take action on the difference. In the event that a discrepancy is found between actual output of the process and the established standard, remedial action needs to be taken. In the diagram showing uh, Julian's trilogy, the sporadic spike shows a significant difference between what is observed and the standard. It is then management's responsibility to suggest a remedial course of action. The third stage, the quality improvement stage, and for that the steps required are number one, prove the need for improvement. Juran's breakthrough sequence tackles the chronic problem of uh, that exists because of a change in current process. This task requires management involvement. First, however, management has to be convinced of the needs for this improvement. Problems such as rework and scrap could be explained in terms of loss of money or as cost-saving opportunities to draw the management attention. Number two, identify specific projects for improvement. Because of limited availability of resources, not all the problems can be addressed just simultaneously. And therefore, problems should be prioritized. A Pareto analysis, again given by Juran himself, is often used to identify the vital problems. Quality improvement process works on project by project basis. A problem area is identified as a project and a consorted effort is made to eliminate the problem. The third point in quality improvement is organized to guide the projects. The organizational structure must be clearly established so that the projects can be run smoothly. Authority and responsibility have to be assigned at all levels of management to facilitate this. Top management deals with the strategic responsibilities. Lower management deals with the operational aspect of the actions. And a structure would have to be established to allocate responsibility for guidance of overall improvement program. Guidance for each individual project and for the diagnosis and analysis of each project. The fourth point is organize for diagnosis, for discovery of causes. Juran defines a diagnostic arm as a person or group of persons brought together to determine the causes of the problem. The organization needs to enlist the right people and to ensure that the required tools and resources are available. This is accomplished through a steering arm this investigation may require technical skills that managers may not possess 
in such instances, the use of professional specialists should be appropriate. The fifth point in this category of quality improvement is find out the causes. This is often most difficult step in the whole process. It involves data collection and analysis to determine the cause of the problem. The symptoms surrounding the defects are studied and investigator then hypothesizes causes for the symptoms. Finally, an analysis is conducted to establish the validity of the hypothesis. Six point in this category is provide remedies. The diagnostic step identifies the cause and effect relationship. Here remedial actions are developed to alleviate the chronic problem. Remedies may deal with the problem that are controllable by management or those that are controllable by operators. Changes in methods or equipment should be considered by the management and may require substantial financial investment. Frequently, the return on investment is analyzed. Remedies may involve a change in the standards if title specifications have, to have no real impact on the performance of the product, the standards can be relaxed. Errors controllable by the operators may be inadvertent due to lack of skill or knowledge or it may uh, willful also. Number seven, prove that the remedies are effective under operating conditions. This is a real test of effectiveness of remedies proposed in the last point to see whether the uh, suggested actions can be implemented and whether they have any beneficial effect for which they were hypothesized. The breakthrough process requires overcoming resistance to change. Changes may be technological or social in nature. The proposed procedure may require new equipment and operators may have to be trained. Management's commitment is vital to the effective implementation of the changes. Likewise, the social changes which deal with human habits, beliefs and traditions require patience, understanding and participation of everyone involved. Number eight point is provide control mechanism to hold the gains. Once the remedial actions have been implemented, and gains have been realized. There must be a control system to sustain this new level of achievement. This means that if the proportion of non-conforming items has been reduced to say by 2%, we must make sure that the process does not revert to earlier non-conforming rate.